With 86,000 students, 92 schools, and 14 cities, Alpine School District is the largest school district in the state of Utah. For the past 20 years, people in the city of Orem have been pushing to split from the district and create an Orem School District of their own. In 2022, Orem City Council voted to conduct yet another feasibility study, putting the total to four different feasibility studies in the past 18 years. Each of the four studies have concluded that it would be financially and academically feasible for Orem City to form its own school district. They voted 7-0 to zero in favor of the latest study. As soon as it was announced that this was an agenda item for the upcoming city council meeting, a group quickly formed to fight against the feasibility study. This group, called Stronger Together, organized swiftly and efficiently almost overnight. But who was behind this group that organized so quickly? And why would they want to fight against Orem residents seeking to know the full ramifications potentially splitting off from Alpine School District would have on Orem City students, teachers, and taxpayers? And why would they organize to fight against this before any information from the feasibility study was known? Stronger Together is a registered political issues committee, or PIC. But who formed it? Could Alpine School District really be behind it? State law and Alpine School District bylaws require a school district remain neutral on political positions. It is also against the law to use public email and school district resources for political purposes, including advocating for or against a ballot position. Is Alpine School District remaining neutral? On February 16th, an email exchange between Rob Smith, the Alpine School District business manager, and Ada Wilson, a member of the Alpine School board representing Orem and Vineyard, took place. These emails were exchanged using both of their Alpine School District email accounts. Ada Wilson had asked Rob Smith to help in setting up her political issues committee, Stronger Together. She asked him to email her a link to the form that shows how to create a PIC and then talk her through it later. She had been looking into the state code to verify the legality of what she was about to do, but must have disregarded the part where she could not use district resources to advocate for a ballot issue. Rob Smith replied with a detailed list of resources he used when he created his PIC in the past. So the Alpine School District business manager helped a sitting board member create a PIC to advocate against a district split. And before any data from the feasibility study was known, was there a violation of state law here? This is especially interesting given that on April 27th, Rob Smith said, Alpine School District is by law required to take a neutral position on the possible Orem School District split. ASD has not used and does not use ASD resources relating to this or other political issues. Yes, Rob Smith, who gave Ada Wilson detailed instructions on how to start a pick to fight against Prop 2 well before the feasibility study had been conducted. On February 17th, David Stevenson, the Alpine School District Executive Director of Communications, sent an email using his Alpine School District email account to Ada Wilson containing proposed messaging against the Orem split. The email contained anti-split talking points for the district to regurgitate. How often have we seen the same talking points repeated from Stronger Together leadership in person and on multiple Facebook pages over the last few months? On February 16th, Ada Wilson sent out an email to the local PTA leadership from different schools. She made these women the founding members of the board of her pick, Stronger Together. The subject line of the email reads, Political Issues Committee. In it, she invites them to gather for a meeting at the public library to discuss the formation of their pick. She signs off the emails as Orem ASD Board Representatives Ada Wilson and Sarah Hacken. So, the two Alpine School District board members acting specifically in their role as board members created a PIC using district resources and their official email accounts, and then they weaponized the PTA leadership to aid them in disseminating information about the district split that was later determined to be patently false 
by the Utah Taxpayers Association. Now that the PTA was playing an integral part in Stronger Together, the PIC sent out surveys to certain teachers and PTA members in the district to get their input on the district split. How did they get all these teachers' email addresses so quickly? Did they use district resources? When Stronger Together's survey was stuck behind a paywall, they used PTA resources as well as principals and Alpine School District administrators to push the survey out. Sissy Rasmussen, one of the founding members of Stronger Together, wrote, Quote, over the next couple weeks, we asked and received permission from regional PTA to forward the survey request to each of their schools. Guess who sits on the regional PTA as an advocacy chair and was able to grant Stronger Together permission to forward the survey? None other than Sissy Rasmussen. It is clear that Stronger Together reached out to these principals and administration and requested their help in disseminating the survey. It is also clear that Stronger Together used the PTA resources to aid them in disseminating the survey. Can a political issues committee formed by the school district to oppose a ballot proposition use school employees to disseminate a survey to teachers? The teachers received a very leading survey. As it was sent to their work email, it did not allow the teachers an option to remain anonymous, as their responses were linked to their work email address. The survey asked them questions about whether or not they were happy working for their current employer. Most employees in any field would have major hesitations filling out a survey like that against their employer. The PTA residents, who sit at the head of Stronger Together, vehemently denied that Alpine School District and Ada Wilson had any part in forming Stronger Together. They each knew that Ada and Sarah had formed a political issues committee, but kept insisting that the group was only formed by parents in the district. They told us they formed it without the help of Alpine School District. Although the grandma request revealed over 1,000 pages of email correspondence involving a woman who is one of the PTA presidents and founders of the PIC, Sissy Rasmussen, and members of the Alpine School Board and administrators. Sissy Rasmussen was also on the founding emails with Ada Wilson in February. She definitely knew the extent of Ada's involvement. Once again, footage and grammar requests were obtained. Orem City residents were able to see who was really behind this political issues committee. I organized a pick. I have a pick is a political issues. And you organized it? I, I initiated it and then other people organized it. My, my name is not a principal, but I is certainly Wait, your husband initiated is, right? it. But is yes. that not called? I'm the one that printed the materials. Okay, but when I I'm created my materials. Ada Wilson and Sarah Hacken attempted to get ahead of the story by publicly sharing their own version of events. Leanne Wood, the Utah PTA Leadership Advocacy Chair, counseled Michelle Sorensen and Sissy Rasmussen from the Region 9 PTA not tie the hands of the local PTAs by having a citywide PTA take an official position. They chose to ignore that counsel. Stronger Together sent out a survey to certain members of the PTA with many of the regional PTA leadership as founding members of Stronger Together. They were miraculously able to gain permission from the regional PTA, which is themselves, to survey their membership. One can only guess how they obtained a list of member emails, although many people in support of Prop 2 report never receiving the survey. The survey asked the membership whether or not they were in support of Prop 2. Once again, it gave no neutral option and required responders to record their email addresses. It was not anonymous and it was a self-selecting survey. Only 36% responded to the survey. Of the 36%, 90% said they were against Prop 2. The PTA then took that and made signs and posters and slogans that said, come see why 90% of the PTA approves Prop 2. The PTA claimed that the 90% of their 36% who responded to the survey were representative of the 90% of the entire PTA. When called out on it, they changed some of their signs, but not before the damage was done, and they intentionally misrepresented many of their membership. Stronger Together had weaponized the PTA against its own membership. Ada Wilson and Stronger Together, along with PTA presidents who comprise its leadership, spent the next few months flooding the city with lies about Orem School District. They told teachers, 
they would lose their benefits and be paid less. This was false. They told taxpayers they would see a 36% tax increase. This was also false. Then they said it was 45%. False again. They Now they claim a 56% tax increase will happen. False. They claim they, we will lose educational services. False. All of their outrageous claims have been proven false by independent government agencies. In fact, no one has been able to verify their numbers. When the feasibility study was being conducted, the consultants at Discovery Education Consulting reached out to Alpine School District to verify Stronger Together's data. ASD told them they were unable to verify the numbers that Ada Wilson had been using. Ada Wilson told us that she and her husband, Keith, came up with these numbers at their kitchen table. They told us that they had the help of a woman named Rebecca Francis who had a financial background, but it turns out Rebecca Francis is not a CPA as Ada Wilson claimed she was. In one email, Sissy Rasmussen asked for verification on the numbers she had been using. She admits that she has no real data to back up what she has been saying and asks for help to verify her claims. With facts that she doesn't continue to say, as she usually does, that the taxes will go up and the services will go down. Rob Smith was unable to provide further clarification for Sissy Rasmussen for several months, so she continued to use the same false numbers, knowing they were incorrect for months. There seems to be a reason that no certified financial analyst will put their name behind these numbers. They had been corrected to give these numbers multiple times by financial analysts, tax experts, and independent government agencies, but they continue to refuse to update them. A few weeks ago, a representative for Stronger Together met with the Utah Taxpayers Association, a 100-year-old independent watchdog organization, to receive an endorsement for their stance against Proposition 2. A few days prior to this meeting, Alpine School District had a post on their website praising the Utah Taxpayers Association and their unbiased approach. After the meeting, the Utah Taxpayers Association gathered information from the Utah County Assessor, the Utah State Tax Commission, and the Utah State Board of Education, and the Office of Legislative Fiscal Analysts. The Utah Taxpayers Association was able to find that the claims made by Stronger Together were, quote, patently false and based on inaccurate calculations. The Utah Taxpayers Association instead came out in strong support of Prop 2. They endorsed Orem becoming its own school district as the best thing for Orem taxpayers. As soon as this endorsement came out, Alpine School District deleted the post from the website where they praised Utah Taxpayers Association as unbiased and trustworthy. Stronger Together then actively attempted to discredit a 100-year-old independent watchdog group by spreading false stories claiming they were biased or paid off. Here's a post stating that the Utah Taxpayers Association was bribed made by the husband of Aaron Wittock who is listed in the Political Issues Committee registration as one of the founding members of Stronger Together. The Utah Taxpayers Association then came out with an additional statement after the accusations were made. This has been a pattern for Stronger Together. They sought to personally discredit each individual and organization that has disagreed with them or disproven their numbers. So far, they've told us that we cannot trust the mayor, the city council, DEC, the independent consulting company that completed the feasibility study, the previous three feasibility studies, one of them conducted by Alpine School District themselves, the Utah Taxpayers Association, the Utah County Assessor, the Utah State Tax Commission, the Utah State Board of Education, the Office of Legislative Fiscal Analysts, tax experts, and independent financial analysts. Are we really supposed to believe that the only organization that is telling the truth in Orem is a political issues committee secretly started by the Alpine School District 100 days ago that was founded on patently false information in which zero certified financial analysts will endorse? Are we supposed to blindly trust the only organization that has a vested financial interest in keeping Orem in the district? The only organization with anything to lose? So why did Ada Wilson with the help of Alpine School District, go to such extremes to fight against Prop 2? Why did the Political Issues Committee disseminate false information, flood the city 
with scare tactics, weaponize the PTA, and they use district resources in doing all of this, and then create their own data and refuse to collaborate and correct their inaccuracies. Because Alpine School District knows what the rest of us have figured out. They need Orem to fund the rest of the district. They want to continue to use Orem taxpayer money to build big schools for other cities in the north and west parts of the district. They want to continue to close and consolidate Orem schools so they can sell the land and use the money to build schools in other cities. And most of all, they want Orem to pass a $600 million bond that will be on the ballot in November. The bond, which is Prop 1 on the ballot, is going towards funding growth in other parts of the district. In fact, Orem will pay 20% of the bond and only see 3% of it back. But will that 3% at least go towards repairing the seismically unsafe schools that ASD has known about since 2006? No, it's going towards building an extra gym in the high school that we don't need. But it will definitely build schools in other cities. The bond debt will increase the debt burden from $528 million to $1.2 billion, and Orem hardly sees any benefit. How can our school board representatives allow us to get into this situation? They were elected to represent Orem in the district, not to represent the needs of the rest of the district to Orem. Knowing what we know about the illegal and unethical way it was founded, how are we supposed to trust the information that is coming from Stronger Together? How are we expected to trust their numbers when they have never been verified? Ada won't even tell us where her numbers came from, apart from the calculations she and her husband performed at their kitchen table. Even Alpine School District themselves was unable to verify Stronger Together's numbers. And which set of numbers are they supposed to verify anyway? They keep changing so frequently. Orem needs their own district. They need to demand transparency from their representatives. They need school board members who won't work tirelessly to fight against the needs of their own city. They need to take care of their own seismically unsafe schools that Alpine School District has known about since 2006. Orem needs to stop letting Alpine School District close its schools and sell the land only to build schools in other cities with the money. They need to stop sending tax money to other cities while only 16% of their high school seniors at Mountain View High School are proficient in math. Alpine School District knows that this is wrong. They know that they have crossed the line ethically and legally. They know they have been deceptive in the way that they have misled teachers and taxpayers. There needs to be accountability. If the bond passes, then in a few years, Alpine School District will cut Orem loose. But it will be after they have closed more of their schools and sold more of their property. It will be in a configuration that is best for them, not what is best for Orem City. The best thing is to split off now. Keep Orem's taxpayer dollars in Orem to benefit Orem students and create their own school district.